Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program, uh, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, courtesy of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. The case today uh, is an uncommonly encountered uh, situation. Well, not so uncommonly. A 60-year-old woman who has an ovarian mass uh, but also has right lower quadrant pain and comes to exploratory surgery. Uh, at the time of surgery, um, it is noted that her uh, appendix is uh, dilated um, and uh, somewhat uh, inflamed and encased uh, in some adhesions. So the appendix is resected uh, along with the uh, ovary as well. Um, this is the appendix, a whole mount, and you can see uh, that the lumen is dilated by this abundant uh, mucinous uh, material. Uh, and that we have some areas of sort of slightly altered appearance in a couple of areas. Uh, and uh, even at low power, I think we can appreciate that there's some hyaline uh, fibrotic changes uh, going on here. So let's see uh, what, if any, uh, epithelial cell changes we can identify here. Uh, looking here uh, in this area, uh, we see that the wall is quite attenuated. We don't see epithelium. Uh, we may have a little bit of preserved muscularis and so forth, but no definite lamina propria. Uh, looking here, we see uh, sort of some fibrosis or fibro sort, sort of uh, dissecting changes with this mu mucin and fibrous tissue here. Again, no epithelial cells, although uh, maybe a few funny uh, histiocytes uh, there with that area. Um, more inflammation as we go along here and see uh, again that this uh, lesion. Uh, has not uh, spared very much of the epithelium, uh, and there may even be some uh, ever areas of uh, uh, histiocyte infiltration and organization. Uh, coming along further to this area, we see it's much more inflamed. Uh, there's been more disruption of the wall. There's uh, fibrin or fibrosis here, uh, this inflammatory stuff uh, as well, and this pattern of sort of dissecting mucus. But looking at this closely, uh, we don't really see anything that looks like uh, definite epithelial cell groups, uh, maybe a few things like this. We might wonder, could they be histiocytes? Uh, could they be epithelial cells? And a cytokeratin stain uh, should help you uh, to uh, clarify that consideration. Um, again, we see this uh, sort of uh, fibrotic change with inflammation. Uh, here, we definitely don't have any lamina propria, uh, but still no definite lining epithelium or anything like that. Uh, and this uh, area of fibrosis and this dissecting mucin uh, is present here, um, not penetrating the wall, but certainly thickening and distorting uh, the wall structure, uh, as we can see here. Then as we come along here, uh, well, lo and behold, we start to pick up an area of epithelium. So we can take a look at this and uh, uh, begin to see that this is fairly low-grade epithelium. Uh, we don't see uh, any stratification or shifting of uh, the uh, um, nuclei. Uh, and we'll go out here a little bit further and trace this out and see what happens. Here we start to see a little bit more cytoplasm, uh, some mucus droplets. And then as we come over here, much more cytoplasm, there's less compression. And notice here that now we see quite clearly we have this epithelium resting uh, quite firmly uh, on a uh, uh, dense hyaline fibrous backdrop. So this is characteristic of uh, low-grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasia, uh, when you have this kind of epithelium situated directly opposed to dense uh, collagenous tissue without lamina propria. Um, and so that puts this into the category of low-grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasia. And um, we will... Uh, discuss a little bit about what we might consider in terms of differential diagnosis. Well, uh, by definition, abundant mucin uh, within and uh, or beyond the lumen of the appendix is required for this diagnosis, together with low-grade mucinous epithelium, no high-grade dysplasia. And we can see pushing invasion, mechanical rupture or dissection only, no destructive invasion. And characteristic is that dense hyaline fibrous um, uh, underpinning uh, beneath the epithelium. 
treatment of these lesions is can be very localized and confined, or it can be very just a simple appendectomy if it's localized disease, but often uh, will lead to a hemicolectomy to evaluate nodes and uh, any uh, potential regional disease. And if there is regional or disseminated disease, they may uh, even go to more uh, dra dramatic uh, debulking uh, with consideration of intraperitoneal heated uh, chemotherapy to uh, essentially cauterize uh, and reduce the uh, risk of proliferation of uh, the neoplasm. The differential for appendiceal muc uh, mucosal, uh, in addition to uh, lamin, is, uh, also includes things like serrated adenoma and villus adenoma that we see in the colon, in the right, especially the right colon, uh, and mucinous adenocarcinoma, is both diff diffuse types and so forth. Uh, goblin cell carcinoids, uh, neuroendocrine tumors, uh, combined tumors, might occasionally give you a mucosal, but typically do not. And then finally, uh, I think uh, drug effect, uh, especially in some patients who've been treated with certain chemotherapy agents, uh, can be considered in the differential uh, if other uh, lesions cannot be identified. Just as a comparison, here's a nice, uh, very early stage example of a uh, slightly dilated uh, distal appendix. But here we can see, uh, even at this magnification, that there is uh, a marked villus architecture uh, associated with this. We see lots of uh, frilly uh, mucoid uh, containing epithelial cells. Uh, but notice here that we have none of that destruction of the lamina propria, uh, fibrosis, or compression of the uh, uh, submucosa and muscularis, or any evidence of attenuation. So although the cytology here is very similar to what we just saw in the low-grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasm, this is better classified as a um, uh, mucinous villus adenoma, uh, still confined to the appendix. Uh, and this certainly, uh, given the fact that we have negative margins here in these other sections, uh, could be uh, treated locally. Now, one thing to be aware of is that these lesions can be focal and uh, sometimes uh, not detecting them can be uh, problematic. Uh, but usually if they've uh, come to the point of di dilating the uh, lumen and producing a mucosal, uh, you'll be able to de de detect them. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is low-grade appendiceal neoplasm. Uh, this involved the appendix and had spread to the ovary. Uh, so uh, that uh, particular uh, uh, Caveat is present that uh, even if you don't see direct uh, perforation or invasion, if you have this sort of low-grade appendiceal neoplasm and similar tissue in the ovary, it is presumed uh, to have arisen from the appendix and treated uh, accordingly as uh, locally disseminated, excuse me, as disseminated disease. So that uh, is an important little thing to remember in terms of management and uh, um, uh, diagnosis. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. And we welcome your con comments. Hope that you'll subscribe and uh, share this with your colleagues and friends. Uh, and as always, we welcome your comments, uh, challenges you faced with these sorts of lesions, and uh, things uh, and questions you may have for topics you'd like to see us cover in the future. Until next time, uh, thanks for joining us.